we are about to enter upon the final 10. And these final 10 days of Ramadan are the most significant and important days of the entire year. There is no parallel to any other time frame than the 10 nights of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a qasam, an oath on these 10. وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرٍ Allah swears by the 10 nights. And there is an ikhtilaf amongst our scholars which of this walayalin ashr. And one opinion says the last 10 of Ramadan is this walayalin ashr. And we learn in a famous hadith in Sahih Muslim that Aisha says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would exert himself in these last 10 nights as he would never exert himself throughout the year. He would make the most effort in the last 10 that he would not make for the rest of the year. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well, it is narrated from Aisha, كَانَ إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَشْرِ Once the final 10 entered, أَحْيَ الليل, He spent the entire night awake. وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ And he would awaken his wives and family. وَاشْتَدَّ مِئْزَرَهُ And he would tighten his belt. And the expression tighten his belt is, is a, a, a connotation of basically doing hard work. You know, even in English, you're going to tighten up. You're going to make it a very, very uh, tough race to finish up. You're going to put in everything that you have. And some have even said that tighten his belt is an expression that indicates that he would not be involved in anything uh, of a physical nature with his family, even though it is halal in those days. But the last 10 nights, uh, even that would be gotten rid of. And there's nothing wrong with both interpretations. These are the nights of exertion. These are the nights you give it your max, whatever you're able to do. من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر. I'll make a statement in the Noble Quran. Indeed, we sent the Quran down during the night of decree, the night of power. And what can make you know what is the night of decree? What is the night of power? The night of decree is better than a thousand months. Allahu Akbar. The angels, Tanazzalul Malaikat wa Ruh, and the Ruh, i.e. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, descend therein by permission of their Lord for every matter. Peace it is until the emergence of dawn. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this surah talks about Laylatul Qadr which can be translated as the night of power, the night of decree. And this night is hidden within the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, from this we clearly understand that this night is a powerful night. It is a night better than a thousand months. And it is a night that is hidden within the 10 nights, the last 10 nights. No one knows precisely as to whether the Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, would fall on the 21st, on the 23rd, on the 25th, on the 27th, we don't know. Allahu Alam, Allah knows best. So it is upon us to strive each and every night from the last 10 nights to try and attain this night. Because if you attain this night, you have attained a night that is more powerful and better than a thousand months. Do the math. It is almost equivalent to 80 odd years. You don't even have a guarantee that you would live that long. Allahu Akbar. You get that night and you reap so many rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Iltamisuha fil ashr al awakhir. Search for that night in the last ten night. Yani Laylat al Qadri, meaning the night of Al Qadr. He says, Fa'in da'afu ahadukum aw ajaza. If if one of you found yourselves to be lazy or weak during the, the first half of Ramadan or the first part of Ramadan, Fala Yuglabanna ala sabi al bawaki then don't let him be lazy with the last seven nights. All right, so the Prophet ﷺ said, seek it in the last 10 nights. And if you felt like, you know, you had a, a, a rough Ramadan, you didn't do that well, then don't mess up in the last week of Ramadan. Make sure that you catch the last week of Ramadan and you find Laylatul Qadr.
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Laylatul Qadr, He says, Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatin Mubaraka. Allah calls it a blessed night. Now, if you remember from the study of Ramadan, the Messenger Sallallahu called Ramadan Shahr Mubarak. It's a blessed month. Now, the word Mubarak, what does it mean in this context? And Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala says, it means Allah. It means that Allah multiplies your deeds exponentially. So Ramadan is a month where if something is done within that month, it's multiplied exponentially, right? And Laylatul Qadr is a night from the month of Ramadan, where if you do something in that night, it's multiplied even more. So it's called Layla Mubarakah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself. The best dua to read during the last 10 nights uh, according to one particular narration, Aisha radiallahu anha is reported to have asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, if I coincide with Laylatul Qadr, with the night of decree, what should I supplicate in it? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then taught her to read, Allahumma innaka afuvun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Allahumma innaka afuvun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. A powerful dua. Allahumma innaka afuv. O oh Allah, you are the most forgiving. O oh Allah, forgive me, overlook my faults, O oh Allah, pardon me. We are asking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a beautiful dua that we should keep reading throughout the last 10 nights of Ramadan to somehow secure the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First and foremost, i'tikaf in the Arabic language refers to isolation, seclusion, and Islamically speaking, it is a great act of worship, a sunnah, a tradition of the Prophet ﷺ that refers to confining yourself and restricting oneself to the masjid. And the Prophet ﷺ during the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan would restrict himself to the house of Allah. Give daily charity. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was always generous, but even more so during the month of Ramadan. The rewards for charity are increased so much during Ramadan that we strongly advise everyone who can to donate a little amount every single day during Ramadan. The reward will be multiplied many times. This way you can also guarantee your donation is on Layat al-Qadr, the night of power. A person who donates only 10 pounds on Layat al-Qadr will have the reward of donating 300,000 pounds of charity. Subhanallah, don't miss out. What is Zakat al-Fitr? An amount of money that is paid at the end of the month of Ramadan. The next question is, why do we pay Zakat al-Fitr? So there are two things that are mentioned in a very beautiful narration. First and foremost, Zakat al-Fitr serves as a means for making up the shortcomings that there might have been in our fast. Much like doing a sighfar after the prayer, or even the sajdat al-sahud, the two sajdas of forgetfulness that are done at the end of the prayer, compensating for the shortcomings. The second reason is to help those in need, to provide something for those people who otherwise might be struggling on the day of their Eid, so that they can also enjoy the end of the month of Ramadan and the day of Eid. Now getting to the question, who has to pay fitrah? Who has to pay zakat al fitr? So the answer to that question is, if you qualify to pay zakat, if you are of a financial status where you pay zakat, your basic needs are met, and according to the difference of opinion, you have enough extra money, savings, for at least a year, and you pay your zakat, you also qualified to pay zakat al-fitr. There's another opinion as well, but what I'm sharing with you is the general majority opinion that is given to folks. The next question is that, how much zakat al-fitr do you give? So there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that mentions different items of food. One sa', which is about six pounds, of wheat, barley, raisins, dates, etc. Now that creates quite a bit of a spectrum could be anything from eight bucks to $25. So just check with your local organization, masjid, community leader, imam, 
and go with whatever they are recommending because they'll be recommending something within that spectrum that is more applicable to your community and your situation. However, one thing that I have to mention here when talking about how much Zakat al-Fitr that you give, Zakat al-Fitr is paid on behalf of every member of the household. So the head of the household will pay for not only himself or herself, but they will pay for every member of the household, including small children, even babies. If a woman is pregnant in the home, you do not pay on behalf of the unborn child, but rather you pay for all the members of the household, um, including even a newborn baby, but you do not pay for an unborn child. Who do you give Zakat al-Fitr to? You give Zakat al-Fitr to whoever can receive, is eligible to receive Zakat. All right, the same person can also receive the Zakat al-Fitr. Involve yourself in a lot of dua. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in regard to all that which you have in terms of requests. And, and du'as that you want answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because these are powerful nights and the du'as will be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala each and every one of us we have requests to make so let us knock on the door of the most powerful the king of all kings for he is the most generous and he will answer our du'as inshallah ta'ala and last but not least don't forget to secure tawbah turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sincere tawbah